I'm Joe Wallace for Turntabling.net. This is another installment in the Vinyl Road Rage series, which is where I uh, am driving cross-country uh, from Chicago to San Antonio, Texas, and back again looking for indie record stores, weird records, and uh, all of the strange experiences that these sort of prolonged road trips lend themselves to having. And I quote Hunter Thompson, I have never condoned drugs or violence, but they've always worked for me. And with that, a nice bottle of Italian red is pretty much a necessity for, for this particular installment. The reason being is because of the brain shredding implications of this record by the feeders, entitled Ever felt like killing your boss? Now, I am not going to. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not going to condone killing your boss, and I am sure that the feeders are not literally condoning you killing your boss. This is a subversive piece of of what would you call it? Propaganda attainment. Um, subversive entertainment. Um, this is just this is basically sort of a, a whack on the side of the head. The way I interpret it, having read interviews with Frank Discussion of the Feeders and uh, just getting uh, to know his take on things, it, it seems that uh, he's not actually advocating workplace terrorism. This is. An expression, a creative expression of hostility towards the workaday world and the average workplace. And, um, again, uh, some Italian red is required for this one. Because, starting with the assumption that we're not actually talking about killing your boss for real, like the title might imply, we can safely label this as uh, good-natured anarchism or, or something else, I don't know what. But the real crazy thing, the real WTF moment about this record is not the transgressive title, Ever Felt Like Killing Your Boss. We know that most of us watching this clip or listening to this record are not going to march into the workplace with a loaded gun and start blazing away. That would be stupid, that would be counterproductive, and that would uh, solve nothing. But the real insanity about this record is the cover. See this cover? What you can't see, due to the limitations of video and the fact that I'm shooting this on a camera phone, there are no close-ups or production values or talent or anything like that. What you can't see is that this album cover actually has a piece of sandpaper attached to it. It's black sandpaper. It blends in with the, uh, with the cover here. But you can see a little seam running across the top here, or, or just below the title. There's a little seam there. That is where they glued the sandpaper, the abrasive with the idea that when it's taken out of this horrifically reflective plastic sleeve that it is currently in, and you place it in your record collection, it destroys the albums on either side, uh, basically sandpapering those covers until they're pretty much worthless and no longer collector's items or objects of desire because, well, they're basically all effed up. And to, to further reinforce the subversive nature of this record, it says right here at the bottom, suitable for home taping. Because this was released in the 80s when people were all flutter about, you know, home taping is killing the record industry. Does that sound remotely familiar to you? Downloads are killing the record industry. They're putting their fists up the rectums of the record industry. Oh my God, we must stop them. And then on the back it says, pay no more than zero dollars and zero cents for this record. So automatically, we, you get the idea that the feeders really, really like the taste of the hand that feeds them, so much so that they want to bite it off. And 
in creating this record, they, they've pretty much guaranteed that you understand completely that they hate the record industry. Now, naturally, this is the 1980s record industry that we're talking about here, and not the current record industry that they're making comments about. But I'll be damned if some of the same uh, bitterness and angst doesn't apply, especially when it comes to suing, you know, 20-year-old college kids for downloading a bunch of illegal MP3 Metallica tunes or whatever. It's the same sort of absurd nonsense. And everybody knows that illegal downloads actually increase sales. Well, I say everybody. I, I mean those of us who can, who can connect the dots and who can, who can see clearly that two and two equal four. But I babble. I'm, I'm getting off on a, on a huge tangent. The thing that really kills me about this record is not that it has sandpaper on the back cover and on the front cover. It's that the very first track on the album is Have You Never Been Mellow? A cover of, yeah, you guessed it, you know, Have You Never Been Mellow? I should never sing for any reason. Well, not ever, but, you know, I, I digress. But anyway, yes, Have You Never Been Mellow? Now, I, I will confess, I haven't heard this album yet. Its reputation precedes itself, and I, I know a bit about it because of the reputation. So naturally, when I spotted this at the fantastic record store in Austin called End of an Ear, I, I bought it sight unseen. I didn't even look at the price tag. I had to own it because, well, I mean, damn, there's that sandpaper right there. I mean, the, 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 the philosophical and political implications about putting that sandpaper on the album cover are just staggering. That is two fingers in the air to the record industry and record collectors. So what they're basically saying is, screw you, record collector guy. Screw you. It's brilliant, really. I mean, talk about the ingratitude. The ingratitude alone. Knowing that somebody paid money for this, you know, they're basically saying, screw you and your, your eight bucks or whatever. They're happy to take it. And that's the, the even funnier part is, yes, they are they're happy to collect your money at the same time that they're flipping you the bird for buying their record. It's, it's awesome. It's awesome. You, you have to admire the cojones of a group that hates its buyers every bit as much as it hates the record industry. Now, that's pure speculation. I don't know if they actually hate the buyers, but you, uh, you kind of get that idea from the sandpaper cover. Yes, you do. I, uh, again, not having heard this record, I strongly recommend you buy it because it's almost a political act just to own it. That's really pretentious and really wanky, but that's how I feel. And that's another edition of Vinyl Road Rage. I'm uh, coming to you from Austin, Texas with this particular installment. There are many more Austin-based videos to come because uh, I've got this bottle of wine and I'm feeling really chatty. But uh, we'll save those for another time. And thanks for watching. You can read more about Vinyl Road Rage at turntabling.net. See you there.